My name is Leo, welcome to the channel. Today I'll show you how to integrate your WhatsApp with your NAN workflows. In this video, I'll cover how to do it using the Facebook API, but there are multiple ways of doing that. One of them is through the Evolution API. Since it doesn't use the official Facebook API, it's kind of a workaround to integrate your WhatsApp business to NAN, but then you won't depend on creating a WhatsApp business account and doing all the integrations that we'll be doing in this video. The video for this integration will be posted in our free community. So if that is what you're searching for, you are more than welcome. The first thing is creating the business name, head over here, the AI Forge. There might be a conflict with the name. So let's just test this out. Yeah, it was created. So all I did was come over here, click that and select apps over here. Inside apps, we go to business settings, and strangely enough, now we got presented with this screen, heading over to apps down here. We have to create a new app. So add app, create a new ID. App name will be the AI Forge. Use cases, you can select other since it's an AI chatbot. Choose business because that will allow you to use WhatsApp's API. And finally, just hit create app. You'll have to insert your password, but as soon as you do, this will be generated. And now all you have to do is head over to WhatsApp, click set up. This is what you'll see. So you can hit start using the API that will redirect you over here to the API setup. That's not what we want. What we're searching for is inside app settings and basic open that in a different window. So this one is maintained over here. When it's open, you'll see your app ID. I like to copy it over to my notepad. Don't save it for obvious security issues. I just use it in the other tab, but don't actually save this. With this, you can head over to your workflow and create it from the absolute zero. So what's up, business cloud, and then there are the triggers. These triggers, you want to select the on messages. And in here, you'll place your account for me to do this with you guys. I'll just delete this previous one I had and create a new credential. Inside your new credential, you'll place this one. So this is the app ID. It will be inside of this field. And then for the secret, it'll be in here. As soon as you save it, you'll get a connection tested successfully. If there's any errors there, it might be that you either reversed it and placed it in the wrong fields here, or you just didn't copy it correctly. As soon as you have the number, you can go over to wa.me and slash the number. That's not working on this account because for some reason, the test number is being unverified and how could you verify a test number? So I searched for that and noticed that there are more people with that same problem. And if that is your case, you'll have to reach for Facebook API support or just create a new portfolio. You'll see that for this account, I do have a successfully connected test number and I didn't do anything different from the creation steps I did for the previous one. Now head back to the WhatsApp API setup. In here, you should select the test number. If you do have your own number and you want to use that, click over here in the add phone number and it will guide you step by step. There's just a detail here that if you already connected your business account to your own phone, maybe that is registered in a different email or a different account from the one you have in Facebook business. And then it will say that that number is already in use. But then what you'll have to do is remove the business account from your phone. Now that you do have your test number, let's fill it in right here. 1555-153-2162. Searching for that in your browser, you'll open up your WhatsApp so I can send a message like, hey, back here inside of the NAN workflow, you'll notice that since I sent, hey, hey, or another like, hi, there is an important step here, which is setting the number that you'll be using to test it out, not just the number that you're going to send the message to. For example, I'm going to send a message from this phone over to this number. So if I'm going to do that, I have to place my number inside of the manage phone number list. If my number is something like I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. For Facebook to make sure that you're not directly using their test system to send spams or something like that, this is where they will verify your number. So after you fill this in, they will send you a code and then you'll type in the code in here and then that number will be allowed for testing. Inside of executions, you'll see all of those executions just by clicking inside of the node. I get the first message of, hey, back here in the last message, that was a hi, I get that right over here. So now that I get the messages, just head over to AI agent, create that. It, we're not going to use a tools agent. We're going to use a conversational agent and now attach a model. I'll attach OpenAI chat model. For the final node, we want to add another WhatsApp node from business cloud and select the send message. Now that we want to send a message, it's a different credential. I already have one set up here. So let's delete that. Yes, delete, create a new credential. And this is where you'll get the credentials for it. Hit generate access token. Here you'll probably have to type in your, your password already did save got it now you'll get the access token this access token goes in right over here and for the business account id it's down over here so just copy that 
paste it down there, save. If it's green, it was successful. Just hit this drop down, and you'll see all the numbers that you have registered in your account. So if you had a production, if I had a production number in here, it would show up. For the recipient's phone number, what we want to do is come over to the executions. And if you did execute something, there will be a JSON in here. Click on the JSON, copy that JSON, go back to the canvas editor, open up your WhatsApp trigger, hit this edit button, place that down, save. When you select WhatsApp trigger from this dropdown, you'll see the information you receive from WhatsApp as soon as someone sends you a message. So what you want to get from here is WAID. And then the text body is what you're going to respond to the user. Since I know that the AI agent has a default response of output, I just have to insert this in here. Okay, with that said, now let's just change what's inside the AI agent because it has to understand what is the prompt. So what, what did the user ask? The user asked exactly, or the conversation, like the text that you, the user sent, was this one. You'll get it down here, just drag it to the text field, and this is what the AI will see. If you want to change anything inside of the system, so tell it to answer like it, it's a parrot or something, you'll configure it inside of the system message. Since I don't want to do that, I'll save it like it is. Now that we have this pinned, every time we execute, like we test this workflow, it will use that information and answer back to the same number that sent the message. So hitting that, the AI will understand the message, then I will get the response back right here. So if I now just come back here and say, what's up? It will go through this workflow and answer me back with, hello, how can I assist you today? Now you understand that it doesn't really have a memory. You can attach a window buffer memory here. It's really not the best one to use. I'd rather use Redis. And again, if you need any help configuring that, please check out our community over at school. Now to test the memory, uh, I can say, hi, my name is Leo. It will probably answer me asking to assist me again. Three, two, one. Okay, this is really, really slow. Yeah, this is taking really long and I believe that it's because of this session ID. If I just type in a one in there and that is completely not ideal, but if I do and send a message, it will always save to that one, but then other users will have the same context as this one. So hello, Leo, how can I assist you today? Uh, what's my name? So now it will, or at least it should remember the previous text and it got your name is Leo. I was just editing when I realized that I left the one as the key for the window buffer memory. That is completely not ideal. Because like I said, then every single user would statically be referred to this one key. And one nice solution would be to just use the number. So we get the recipient's phone number over here. And that could be the unique identifier for each specific user. Just place it as an expression down there. And then every single time the window will refer to that specific person based on their number and not statically with one every single time. Now I could just end the video and say this worked perfectly, but if you go over to the execution tab, you'll see that we get a lot of errors. What are these errors? Because we are correctly getting back the response. If I continue typing things like, why is Facebook API so bad? I will get a response back. But despite getting the response back, I'll still get a lot of errors after that response. That's because Facebook is trying to get me responses based on billing information and other many informations of loggings that they can send for your service. But we don't want to use those messages. So what we do is go back to the editor, add a node in between this if node. And what I can observe is that in those other calls, so back to executions inside of this error. And I feel like it's important to go through these steps so just because if this happens to another API, you'll know how to solve it. So just checking in here, you'll see that we don't have a messages array and we do have that for the original message. So JSON, there's the message array. For me to only consider the message and send that message over to my AI agent when it exists, I want to place in here a messages. So just drag that up there and go to array exists. So every time it exists, this will follow on to the true path. And if it doesn't, it will move on to the false. So saving that and trying to execute it again down here. Okay, I actually like Facebook API. So let's see that inside of the execution tab that was answered successfully. But then even though I received those WhatsApp triggers, they weren't executed. Why? Because it went to the false route. But to be honest, there should be a place inside of the app dashboard where you can figure what to receive inside of your webhook. I did not find that at all. And if you do, please leave the link to it inside of the comment section. Now, I believe it's well configured. If this video helped you at all, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.